and Painter Servant combo in his deck. Cool. Cool deck. His deck is really cool. He has Chalice of the Void in his deck, which is a really powerful card. He has Force of Will. He has like Daze. He has Jace the Mind Sculptor. Blue Elemental Blast, Spell Pierce, Pithing Needle. Huh. So this is almost a blue a blue Painter Servant deck. Yeah, I mean it is. It's yeah. a blue Painter yeah. Servant deck. It's, it is. And it's got he's a lot of it's, it's got a Trigger Mage package, like a really diverse one. Alright. And he's so. playing against Michael Riley, who is playing Maverick. Uh, looks like a pretty standard Maverick list. Focused, of course, around Green Sun Zenith, Stoneforge, Knight of Reliquary, Mother of Runes, etc. So a Tundra Delver, that's not something you see every day. You're no. Like, what yeah. is going on? Michael Riley, not sure what's going on, but uh, he has to figure he's against an aggressive deck, but he's going to be so surprised when he gets Painter Servanted out. Yeah. Michael leads with Trop, Mox Diamond. He'll be discarding a Dryad Arbor. Natural Order not in his sideboard, though. And he'll play a Scavenging Ooze. Scavenging Ooze, similar to the dog I have now. <laughs> right. I have a pug. <laughs> scavenging Pug. That'll be a magic card someday. In the dog themed set. The dog themed set, the yeah. future dog themed set. A daze Ooh. counters that, uh, and no flip on that Delver on turn one. Mark Valley with an underground seat. So, so far he showed him an underground seat and a tundra, and, and he's a painter servant deck. <laughs> and Michael Riley must be so confused right now. He's like, what is going on? He's like, okay, so an Esper Delver deck, this probably has Confidant, maybe yep. Meddling Mage, Swords to Plowshares, definitely. But nope. No, none of those cards are in Mark Paoli's deck. This is an interesting question from Cody Ballsizer, and I want to go back to it later. If we could unban any card on the Legacy ban list, what would it be? I'm, I'm going to think about that one, and, and we yeah, can go we'll back, back to, to that, that one. Mark Paoli uh, goes with a brainstorm response to that wasteland. And I, don't, I, don't, I guess it's fine. I like it just because it, 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 it will flip that Delver. It'll dig him deeper to maybe something like a Force of Will this turn if he didn't have one already, and it'll definitely flip down there. That's fair. It's just rough because, I mean, you're kind of just dead to a Stone Forge Mystic. Unless, I guess you can just dig for the Force of Will right now. Right. If you don't have it. And there's the Mystic. And that will meet a Force if Mark has one. Definitely. But no Force of Will. He'll get to search up an equipment. He does have a Force of Will. Oh, wow. No no other blue card? Well, Can't. just Brainstorm. There's right. no way he has another blue card. The only other blue card, uh, he might have had to put it on top to flip that Delver. Maybe. Because really, Mark's deck doesn't have all that many instants. He has a lot of, uh, a lot of enchant, or a lot of artifacts, rather. I just noticed in Mark's deck, one Lawan Cephalid Empress main deck. That's awesome. A main deck Lawan. <laughs> that is bold in a, in a format in, as right. diverse as Legacy. Now, earlier I, I spoke about the uh, the merfolk of Florida. Yep. <laughs> Lawan. Yeah. I think Mark knows something that uh, most of the rest of the room doesn't. Sectile Aberration. Jeff Goldblum himself. Ooh. I'm gonna buzz on over into the red zone. Mike Riley, dropping to 16 from this attack. Uh, to answer your question, Ari Lax, uh, Trop and Mox Diamond are not close to standard in Maverick. No, you're right, but he has, he has one Mox Diamond and he has uh, two Tropical Island. He has a little bit of a blue package. Uh, yeah, he's got like pretty one small. War Monk and yeah. one Trigon Predator. But that's about it. Yeah, and like uh, the War Monk's really good against rug decks. Right. This is uh, this is kind of the Maverick deck that uh, I'm sure a few people are playing it today. Like Lulaskin, 
I think is responsible for this Maverick list, but but it is Maverick. I mean, yeah, it's it's almost identical to Maverick. Besides those, those are pretty much the only two differences. I mean, he's not. He's not punishing firing. Right, right. He's, he's, he's like not he's, punishing he's firing. Maverick's a little bit of a misnomer. Yeah, it's, it's really just really the green white deck with blue. It's it's the green white Maverick deck with with blue splash. So Mark in the middle of a brainstorm here puts two back. And it looks like he's thinking about Force of Willing that Noble Hierarch. That'd be surprising. I agree. Yeah, Force of Will is one of those cards that I really, really hate to use for its alternate cost, unless I'm going to absolutely lose the card of planes. Yep. Force of Will is a Noble Hierarch. Wow. We're moving Jace the Mind Sculptor. Mark only has one land, and he will be facing down a GTA. But still, that that's that's a crazy force of will. Yeah. And yeah, just like people are pointing out on Twitter, uh, if you have a painter servant and a Luan, it is a lock. Uh, but he has no way to find the Luan really. It's it's just a one of, which is why it's pretty strange. No Imperial Recruiter. And he's also playing Blue Elemental Blast, so he has to name Red in order to make that happen, and then he has to name Blue in order to make the Lawan happen. Right. So he's kind of going in multiple directions there a little bit. Yeah, just just sort of a strange one of. And uh, Michael will pass the turn. He'll be flashing in that GTA on end step, of course. Yeah, and then uh, suddenly the Delver is not really relevant at all. Yeah, take that Delver to Frown Town. That guy will go right to the graveyard. <laughs> fly swat it out. It is hard to f swat a fly with a Numazawa's Jute, but somehow it always happens. It, I think they skewer the fly is really what happens. That Jute is really right, skinny. Right. For a bug. Yeah, it's, it's really impressive. Well, for a bug to have three power, that means it's three times as strong as a human. So probably a pretty big bug. That's a like gigantic, a like perhaps uh, an insectile aberration, even. Yeah. All right, and uh, Michael, gonna take a hit for three in the air there from insectile aberration. Yeah, I I feel like uh, if Mark didn't force a will that noble hierarchy, he'd be in far better position right here because what does that hierarchy really do? If you go out the front doors, take a right. And now the jig is up. Right Mark casts a grindstone. Of the hole, take a quick left. You're going to hit this Java zone. Now Mark Michael's is just thoroughly confused. Mark is just like, <laughs> yeah, look at him. He's deep in the tank. He's like, whoa, okay. That's fine. So there are definitely some places to grab some food. He's like, he's just like, sure. He's like, I don't know if I should be happy about that or not. So GT flashes in, Michael untaps and draws. GT equips and Stoneforge comes in. That'll drop Mark to 18, but more importantly, the GTA will get counters. Yeah, and that's going to uh, deal with that Delver right away. Right. And if the GTA ever gets more than two counters, it'll be able to kill a Painter Servant on site. Which makes the grindstone pretty laughable. Yeah. And Michael, at this point, may not even want to remove those two counters. He's like, okay, I can take three damage. Yeah. That's cool. Like, it, you're not really scared about going to nine against the deck that just cast a grindstone against you. Right. Exactly. You're not sure if he's on the Delver plan or the Painter Servant plan, but you know that you just won't die to the Insectile Aberration this turn. Players from the first draft open. We have yeah, a and, top uh, eight. I mean, with a Jitten play with counters on it, it's very difficult for your opponent to kill you with hit at Sugu's second right. So. The top eight. <laughs> <laughs> just completely random things are flying at you from the other end of the table. Next to impossible, <laughs> I'd say. <laughs> we'll be moving on. In first place, Greg Jones. And in second place, Martin Acuna. 
Michael might feel a little Seven bit like he's playing uh, like a Mummy or Big variant. <laughs> so he just taps mana into some random card onto the table that has the ghost. Oh, it'll look really strange if a Lawan comes into play. Alexander <laughs> Klein. In fifth place, Brett Farrell. In sixth place, Joseph Crosby. In seventh place, Dylan Fay. And in eighth place, claiming the last top eight spot, which will be drafting with the second draft open at 2.30, Armando Perez. So the top eight players for the first draft open, Greg Jones, Martin Acuna, Adam Asher, Alexander Klein, Brett Farrell, Joseph Crosby, Dylan Fay, and Armando Perez. Not sure what the players are talking about right now. Uh, they might be waiting for a judge oracle or a judge ruling. So they're getting some oracle text on uh, Grindstone. You might have heard in the background there, the top eight of the draft open was just announced. Uh, Joseph Crosby in the top eight. Atlanta player. Very good, just, just uh, doesn't really play that much. Nice to see him making a little bit of a return. Tormod's crypt enters play. Game one, Tormod script. Michael gets even more confused. Michael's mind being blown <laughs> over and over and over again. And now, uh... Michael Riley now has enough counters on this Jitte that uh, he can be uh, pretty safe now from any sort of grindstone shenanigans. Right. The fact that he has three counters means that he can resolve two and then have two chances to respond to any, uh, any painter servant with its three toughness. So uh, Michael Riley won the uh, Legacy Championships at, uh, in Indy, right? 2005. In 2005. Back first in place, the day. Though. Yeah, first place. That's one of the first major Legacy tournaments. Yeah, one of the first. I, th I think that was just right before or right after Grand Prix Philly. So right now, Michael's casting a Green Sun Zenith for two. And in response, he'll be grindstoned. Mark will try and hit his target. Fortunately, can't see what he hit. No, but... But not the card he was looking for, it doesn't look like. Well, he can search for anything of the casting cost that he... Right. This might be a Scrib Ranger here. Seems reasonable enough. Yep. I would like a Scrib Ranger. Okay, well that's good that's insurance fine. too. Yeah, yeah, I mean he he doesn't know what's going on. Right, that's actually probably the, the safest bet. And I, that's probably what I would get. You know, yeah. You, when you, you don't even know if it's going to be a painter server to go that grind. So I might be like, there's a magic card that I must not know about. Right. That's like, coming like right now. Why would it be in a Delver deck? Chaotic Backlash? No, that that only works with painter servant. Um, yeah. yeah, not sure. Yeah, I'd be trying to like deduce things in my head, and I'd be really drawing a blank. I'd be thinking that Mark was playing some card that I had, like, just never seen before or completely forgotten about. Right. I mean, look at his board. He has Tundra, Tundra, Volcanic, Underground in the Graveyard, Tormod's Crypt, Grindstone, Insectile Aberration. And a, and a UC in hand. Right. And he's already forced to remove to Jace. <laughs> to counter a Noble Iron. Now Mark would uh, would be untapping, could lay a fourth land and play Jace if he had it right here. That'd be pretty good. Jace the Mind Skulls is a really yeah, powerful spell. It's better than all. I was actually talking to uh, Zach yesterday and I said that uh, I've actually taken Jace over Ancestral Recall in cube drafting. Yeah. Got a lot of flack for that one, but stand by it. Yeah, I mean, after thinking about it, I've never had to face that pick myself, but after thinking about it, 
I think it's pretty close. I, I, one card wins the game on its own, one card uh, is a concentrate. Really efficiently costed, but still just a concentrate. I mean, if you're already a blue deck, you definitely take Jace. If you're not necessarily, you take Recall, right? Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense to me. If you have Ice Crown Scepter, you take Recall. <laughs> That's true. Snapcaster made, you probably take Recall. Eternal Witness, you probably take Recall. Probably. There are a lot of reasons to take Recall. Yep, yep. But if you don't have any of those reasons, Jace, Jace just wins by itself. What if you have Black Lotus? <laughs> I think you take Jace. Jace. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Mark just attacked with Delver of Secrets, uh, and the GTA shot it out of the sky. Uh, Mark had his fourth land, but no play. Now, Mike O'Reilly's not going to need much time to put this game away. Not at all. I mean, that GTA, that GTA works fast. is uh, going to do some quick work. Yep, that's three. And uh, he, he should probably let that get two more counters, at least for one more turn. Yeah, you don't want to uh, you know risk any sort of shenanigans. Right, and he does. So drops Mark to 14. You know, funny, uh, the uh, Legacy Championships that Michael Riley won in 2005 actually had Zvi Moshewitz in the top eight. Also, really? Kyle Bogomis, who wow. had not done anything before that. He was probably some sort of like young, doe-eyed child in 2005. <laughs> well, was. <laughs> <laughs> Is? <laughs> so, ahead of turn, Mark will crack his fetch, go grab... Uh, Maybe some other kind of crazy dual land, we'll see. Maybe he'll get his trop. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of lands here. I don't even know what these are for, really. I guess they're just for one, the, engineered yeah, explosives. Yeah, the one engineered explosives. I think I'd want um, at least one basic island in my deck. Mark actually has zero basics. Interesting. I, I, he's mono blue, too, so like, yeah. it's kind of like... Hey, I would want a ton of basics in this deck. Right. I might want back to basics in this deck. It seems a lot better than some of the other cards, like the main deck Torment Script. He does have uh, a, a playset of lines. Trinket Mage. He has, he has four Trinket Mage to go find it, so it's pretty reasonable that he wants a Graveyard Hate card. But I think I'd prefer Nihil Spellbomb if he, had his, if he has Underground Sea. So Mark will grind Michael's deck. See what he hits. And I mean, uh, grinding here, not very good. Just kind of closes the gap a little bit with that knight in play. Right. He's probably just trying to get a little more information at this point about the contents yeah, I mean, of Michael's he's, deck. He's long, long gone at this yeah. point. But There's, just by grinding, he you know sees a few more cards. Right. Might know how to sideboard a little bit better. Mark playing two Academy Ruins. So. The Trinket Mage plus Tormod Crypt, the Trinket Mage plus Engineered Explosives looks to be a pretty big part of his plan. It gives him a lot of versatility versus uh, decks that try and concentrate on one thing. So Kazali Pride Mage will destroy the Tormod Crypt. And he'll get Crypt in response, of course. Removes the graveyard. Also, the Kazali Pride Mage should be in the in the exile pile. We'll make sure that happens for you. There we go. And since the swords were white, he'll flip again. Green Sun and Pride Mage. He'll flip again. Mother Runes land. So it looks like Mark will get one more turn here. You know, engineered explosives would be a pretty sweet draw. It would be. I'm surprised to use that Pride Mage in the crypt. Me too. Who cares? Yeah. Not, Not really. really so sure. Maybe he thought Mark was going to try some crazy combo on him uh, involving his own graveyard. Maybe. Because if, if, if I was Michael right now, I would not know what was going on. Just like we've been talking about, I would be playing really safe. I guess you're right. And you have three counters on a jit, you're not really worried about losing to a painter servant. Right. Or four counters on a jit, rather. Three, you could conceivably lose. Pitting needle. Oh boy. 
We'll see what he names. So GTA will gain eight life in response, bring Michael up to 14, and Mark will name GTA. And uh, does Mark have a painter servant now? I'm not sure. If, if he does, he might be able to steal this game away from Michael. He does. Oh my god, a painter <laughs> servant. Now the Kazali Pride Mage on Tormod's crypt looks so foolish. So Mark might have found a way to win this unwinnable game. Michael untaps and will need some help from the top of his deck. And, you know, he already milled two sorts of plowshares, so... It looks like Michael has an Eternal Witness in hand, though, so he can just... Eternal Witness back a sorts of plowshares towards the servant and then attack. And, oh, wow. And then everything's completely fine. Yeah, that's, that's a good draw. I think that might have been the only draw on the deck, that and Green Sun Zenith. Oh, so there you go. Yeah. Very nice top deck by him, then. That Knight of the Reliquary is now a 3-3. Three, three. Eternal Witness here. Going to go ahead and return a uh, Sword Splash Shares. He's going to Swords that Pinter Servant. Yep. Bring Mark up to 14, but Mark will take 4 this turn. Should be four anyways. Well, I mean, he could actually... How does the math work? Do you, you attack with the knight this turn? Or can he, if you wait till next turn, is it one well, turn faster? Well, let's see. If he attacks for four, that'll bring Mark to ten. And then next turn, uh, that'll be six. So three turns. That's three attack phases. If he gets a land and then a fetch land, uh, it'll be the same amount of, uh, of clock. It's, yeah, it's the same clock. Okay. Fair. But he could get a wasteland with that knight. Which might be pretty good. I mean, he, he doesn't know that his opponent isn't playing green or red cards. Right. Or white cards. But the knight will turn sideways, it looks like. Yep, GTA does get counters, but uh, remember he can't use it. So Mark needs to draw another Painter Servant right here. Jace would be good too. Jace would be pretty good. He's thinking. I mean, it's his last card, he's probably just got to play it. Yep, he can survive one more attack. Uh, it's just a wasteland. But now Gotta that that's a land, he gives him a, that gives him a little redraw option. He will be able to draw a Painter Servant now. Yeah. We'll see if Michael cuts that option away from him by uh, searching up a Wasteland. Angel's Green Sun Zenith, which completely cuts that avenue out. Sword of Fire and Ice, Green Sun Zenith, Michael's hand. Uh, but does the sword just kill him? Yeah, the sword is actually exactly lethal. Yeah, so you probably just kill your opponent. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Uh, yep, that, that was the one draw in uh, Michael's deck that kills the opponent this turn, so we won't even get to sweat the top of Mark's library. Yeah. Michael Riley, live top of his deck here at the end of this game. Uh, Mark Paoli has no cards in hand. So it's surprising that Michael Riley chooses to not kill his opponent. Yeah, we, we could possibly have the life total wrong. Mark Paoli could be at 11, something like that. The Knight of Reliquary could be a 2-2. Uh, that, that could explain that. But, no, it's uh, not. No? Okay. Uh, no, I mean, the life total might be 11. Right. I, well, but, Michael Riley, Green Sun Zenith for uh, Trigon Predator. And I mean, then he's still dead to 
the painter servant. You might as well just get a pride mage, right? Because then you could actually stop it if it's going uh, to kill you. He only had one in his deck, and uh, oh, okay, he, he okay, went through enough. it. So yeah. yeah, there were really no more green suns in the targets after after the witness. No more good ones anyway. Well, you just equip the sword and kill him, right? Yep. So, uh... so I believe if Michael Riley uses his Knight of the Reliquary to get a Wasteland, that would cut Mark off of any outs he might have. Seems reasonable. Yep. Oh, Mark! Mark wants it to be a Painter Servant. Wait, did it, Michael not attack with anybody? I don't think he did. I'm not sure if he's toying with his food or what. Yeah, I'm just but. a little confused by that. And he didn't search for the wasteland either, so he actually gave Mark some outs here. Yeah, he did. We'll see if Mark drew it. <laughs> Mark tapping two mana. This might be it. Could it be? A painter servant off the top here. So just game one we're in right now, and only 21 minutes left on the clock. Both these players taking their time with this game. Wow. Um, the game could have ended a long time ago. And Michael counting it up, showing his opponent that he's dead. So Mark packs it in after one last grindstone, get a little information from his opponent's deck, and they will move to game two, but they'll have to speed it up. Yeah, they're gonna have to play fast. That was a really long game. That was a 30 yeah, minute was game. A long game. Yeah, it didn't even go that long, like as far as what happened in the game. If I was uh, either of those players, I would have been telling the other one to play faster. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So looking at the sideboard, uh, Michael Riley has an enlightened tutor package in his board, the full four tutor with uh, a lot of silver bullets. Let's see which ones he might use here. Uh, he will he will bring in Pithing Needle. Uh, he will choke. bring in Stony Silence. Yeah, Choke choke is a good one too. Yeah. So Pithing Needle, Choke, Stony Silence. Uh, he could bring in Serenity. It's an option. Uh, but that's pretty much all he'll have. Mark Paoli. Hercules Recalls, Engineered Plagues. Leyline of Sanctity, Leyline of the Void, Mindbreak Trap. So, nothing really there. He could bring an Engineered Plague uh, on Human. It's, it's definitely not bad on Human. Kills Mother Runes. Uh, but uh, not too many sideboard options, really. Also, also of course, kills the, the Noble Hierarch. But that's probably the only card we'll see from Mark Paoli. So, uh, yeah, we're in game two now. Michael Riley being up a game when there's only 21 minutes left on the clock, it feels nice in one sense because you could win the match 1-0, but in another way, it's, you know... It's bad because you don't get the chance to win game three. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're in danger of drawing. Yeah. So if I were yeah, if I were either player here, I'd be sideboarding really quickly. Uh, I would want to get this match uh, done with and on the move as soon as possible. Yep, Maybe they can't see the clock. Will players play very deliberately that game? Wanted yeah, to make sure they uh, didn't mess up. We should uh, make sure they know that the time is running out a little bit. The judges could say that to them. Yeah, that was uh, an interesting game to say the least. It was. Uh, I, I think I think a big a big advantage that Mark had that game is his opponent had no idea what he was going for. Very uh, true. He blew that Quasali uh, Pride Mage on the Tormod script when he had no real reason to. Um, and it almost lost in the game. Had yeah. Had not top deck his way out of it, it, it would have. It was really close. But then again, had Mark not just Force of Will the Noble Hierarch. Yeah. He would have had a Jace. Yeah. And, I mean, and an he, extra Force of Will. Yeah. That, that Force of Will could have protected his combo to win, win in the game. That Jace would have just won the game completely by itself. Yeah. Like the Jace actually just would have won the game by itself. Right. That game that we just watched was one of those games where a player who casts Jace automatically wins against the other player. Yeah, he would have had to find the right window to resolve it, but especially backed up by Force of Will, yeah. which, which would have still been in his hand. 
Definitely. The Noble Herc, not really the type of card you're looking to force of will. Yeah, uh, maybe you, turn one, there could be an argument made for it, you know, if you have a particularly slow hand. But, or if you have a good read, yeah, you know, sure. but... But turn three Noble Hierarch after the Stone Forge had already resolved. It just, it's not going to do that much at that point in the game. Okay, now, uh... It's so, just surprising <laughs> to me. It's yeah. Very surprising to me. Still trying to figure out exactly what happened that match. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit frazzled, to be honest. Befuddled? Yes. Bamboozled? Fuzzled. Bamboozled. Runeboggled. Runeboggled, that's a good one. Yes. Alright, so Mark Paoli, only two Ancient Tomb in his deck. No Lion's Eye Diamond, so he doesn't really have the explosive power of most of the Painter Servant decks. But I mean, playing an Ancient Tomb for a turn three Jace, oh, pretty that, powerful. That's fine, that's more than fine. I'd almost rather do that than anything else. Turn three Jace is more than twice as good as a turn four Jace gets exponentially better the earlier you cast it. Yeah. I, I, I completely agree. I've played against turn one, Jace. It's tough. It's really tough. I cast a turn one, Jace, and won that game. Did you? I did. How about that? Was it close? No. <laughs> it was actually really sad because I opened my hand, like, had the turn one, Jace against my friend in a cube draft, and then he mulliganed a five. Nice. And you want so badly when you have the turn one, Jace, like, to just crush whatever they're doing, and then when he's just not doing anything anyway, and you have the right. turn one Jace, you just kind of feel like... You feel bad. Yeah, you're like, oh, I'm kind of mean. It's like, all right, you want to go to game two, man? <laughs> I was really hoping I'd have fun with this. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I did actually manage to beat in a cube draft was a turn one Elspeth. He had a Black Lotus turn one Elspeth on the play. I was really proud of that one. Elspeth's pretty tough, too. That's... I mean, Elspeth's in my top ten cards to take in cube. I, I've... A strange list. Like most people, like their top ten list is just like power and like library, right. and soul ring. Moxes you know, are so overrated. They're really overrated. And they're draft. good. Yeah, they're they're definitely good. I take them pretty high. Yeah, but like off color mox, a lot. There's a lot of things better than an off color mox. Yeah, like I take Marari's wake. <laughs> Marari, that's <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice card right there. Like, a lot of people don't know that's a nice card. No, no. I've, I've tabled it. I've, like, opened that in Future Sight, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> what's it, what's you it know? take? <laughs> and, like, you just table the wake. You're like, oh, cool. I mean, that card was printed in, like, 2003. So, for a lot of players, they weren't even playing in 2003. Talk about a demoralizing standard deck to play against. Mirari's Wake. Yeah, these guys wow. are still shuffling. I'm surprised they haven't gotten a warning. Well, last time I was in a Star Seagames feature match, I was playing against... Uh, I actually forget now who I was playing against. Maybe Eric English, but Eric English and I were shuffling for maybe just a couple minutes, and we got a warning. Yeah. For just like two and a half minutes, and we had like 38 minutes left in the clock. I mean, so if anything... I thought it was a little bit aggressive, yeah. but... I mean, if anything, I, th I think they should be more aggressive with warnings, not less aggressive. I agree. Uh, whenever you can warn a player, do it, because it takes a lot of warning to accrue any better penalty, or any 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 bigger penalty. Michael is mulliganing six. Hopefully that doesn't take as long as it took for them to draw their initial seven cards, because, you know, they're, they've just spent, you know, over 20% of the amount of time they had for this last game just shuffling and getting their initial seven cards. Yeah, let's hope none of them have fetch lands for turn one. Yep, only 14 minutes left. So they actually, he actually a spent third of 30 percent <laughs> of the amount of time they had for game two. Uh, they, they've got a buddy nearby. <laughs> Say hi. We're getting ready for a six Michael's not really hands. complaining. He's he's up 1-0 at this point. Yeah. And uh, Mark being a, a little too casual about shuffling his opponent's deck when there's this, this amount of time left on the clock. Well, what Mark needs to do, he needs to get a quick combo and then move to game three with, uh, well, he won't have much time for game three regardless, but we'll try and get it done here. Okay. So an underground scene, then he passed the turnover. You know, there are a lot of uh, little things. Like, there, were, there was one turn where Mark had no cards in hand, drew a wasteland off the top, and then thought for maybe 30 seconds before playing the wasteland right. and then passing. And that's really just... You gotta play faster. And I don't, I'm not, I don't think he's trying to do it for any sort of advantage, but you, you just have to do it. It's right. So Michael Riley, turn one Noble Hierarch. Mark, turn one Brainstorm. 
I don't like that brainstorm. I do not like that brainstorm at all. I think that's a very weak brainstorm. That said, though, we can't see Michael's or uh, we can't see Mark's hand rather. So, if he's trying to combo out very quickly, maybe try and find an ancient tomb, play both pieces of his combo, something like that. And you can wait till turn two. There's right. like, the, the turn one brainstorm there. Just you're definitely right that I that turn one brainstorm probably isn't right. Correction, uh, Twitter was asking who take the uh, saying it took a while to shuffle. They actually, it was nine minutes to shuffle for this game. Wow. So Noble Hierarch was dazed. Mark Untaps plays that same underground and a Sensei's top. Okay. Uh, another land for Michael Riley. He's going to crack this Misty Rainforest, bring himself to 18 here, grabbing a Tropical Island. Yep. Only playing one Tropical Island. Zach like Blue is kind of a soft splash for him. Oh, two Chop Clowns, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, uh, he has Rock Swarm Monk, which is very strong against these Rug Delver decks right now. Yeah. Almost unbeatable card. if it connects. Yeah. So, Silhana Ledgewalker is the turn to play. Probably not a card that uh, Mark expected to play against. Not at all. I mean, if you thought Invisible Stalker was good, this card's slightly worse. But it's still good. <laughs> it's the a green Invisible Stalker. Green Invisible Stalker. How, now, okay, how is a blue creature better than a green creature? Answer me that. Uh, a blue creature is better than a green creature because... It pitches to force a will. <laughs> four years have passed. Right, okay, there, there. Creatures have got much better. Yep, true. So Mark upkeep tops and plays a Tundra. Um, Invisible Stalker was actually a, uh, a, a mean, mean trick by wizards to make my life significantly less good. <laughs> you and me both. I'm not a fan of that card. Not a very interactive card. No. Apparently, uh, Sohana Ledgewalker, Jacob Corey, Legacy Tech. <laughs> Self-proclaimed, <Very> nice. anyway. <laughs> so, Ledgewalker gets in for one. And now, Mike, for those of you who don't know the text on that card, it is a 1-1 one -one with Hexproof, yep. essentially. Didn't have that name back in the day. But that cannot be blocked except by creatures with flying. Right. Or walls. Can it be blocked by defenders? Reach and flying, I want to say. Reach and fly? Uh, let's okay. make sure. So I mean, it's been a while. Yeah. I, it's not like I've played that card for I played that card and limited a long time ago and hardly ever played it. Nope, it, only creatures with flying. So creatures with reach cannot block it. Right. That often comes up in Legacy. Uh, creatures, <laughs> creatures with reach. One of the strongest natural abilities in Magic. Cloud Thresher will <laughs> not be getting in the way of <laughs> Solana Ledgewalker in this yeah. match. So... Mark puts his cards back for his top at end of turn. It's interesting that Michael Riley does not wasteland him. That's really surprising to me. I like a wasteland there. Like you already have the two mana in play to equip the right. large walk for the next turn. Right, you have all the mana you need. Oh, but I mean, now it looks pretty good that he didn't waste him. Right. He definitely wants to waste that ruins instead. So Mark says go. And end of turn wasteland, no reason to do that because... Uh, he might as well just wait until yeah. your next turn. It's going to be untapped anyway. Exactly. It doesn't cost any mana to use. So it's, it's a pretty easy problem, or it's 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 a pretty common problem. Uh, a lot of people gut shot at the end of turn. Yeah, I mean, you never you never know when you're going to draw, you know, something that makes that wrong. Something that makes it wrong. Yeah. Give yourself an opportunity to just have a little more information to make your plays with. So Michael Riley fetch land equip Gta. Yeah. And, and this is going to start going to town. Yeah, what Mark really needs here is his one Engineered Explosives. We haven't seen any Trinket Mages this match. No, and he's playing full four copies of it, too. Yeah, he would love that card next turn. Like a Riley attacking for one. Going to put Mark down to 18. Yep. Uh, two Jitte counters, though. And it looks like end of turn. Mark will go for the top. Herkel's Recall. Oh, so the uh, the Jitte, not getting counters. Uh, Mark Paoli casting a Herkel's Recall. 
to bounce. Huh. Like I said, I'm surprised Hercules Recall comes in here. Yeah, uh, I I didn't expect to see it, but that looked pretty good, didn't it? That wasted four mana from his opponent, two entire turns. It's good in this case. Yeah, I mean, it's really surprising. Not really, you don't really expect somebody to be on the Jitte plan when they're against these combo decks, you right. know, especially like going one one into Jitte is not the kind of clock you're looking for to beat. It's a really great way to pick up some. You know, I, I could beat either of these draws with a standard deck with most of my draft decks. Most of my draft decks. Yeah. I don't know about Jitte. I don't think you could beat a Jitte. Oh, yeah, I guess not the Jitte. But if, <laughs> but if you Jitte would have beat any <laughs> any draft deck I'd ever drafted. So Mark, so Mike O'Reilly gonna finish his turn uh, with a fetch and an enlightened tutor, or is it, no? This is this is the end of Mark's turn. My apologies. Yeah, now this uh, enlightened tutor, it's, it's got a ton of different things that it can target here. Yeah, I could get a pithing needle, a choke, a stony silence, a serenity. Choke seems pretty good. I might just grab the choke. Seems pretty reasonable. Especially when that you're up a game and there's. Nine minutes up on the clock, and everything's kind of up in the air. Choke <laughs> seems like a pretty good one. <laughs> Stony Silence wouldn't be bad either. Stops no, that no, no, top no. cold. Uh, I believe and it stops also, the the land too. I forget exactly how it's worded. Yeah, it's actually I, I think uh, it does. A, oh, and he grabs Stony Silence exactly. Yep, the land will not be able to be yeah. activated. Stony Silence is the name of a uh, screenplay I'm working on, where Woody Harrelson gets stuck in the silent film era. Oh, wasn't that called <laughs> The Artist? <laughs> <laughs> So the deck is cut, the silence is on top, and it's drawn for the turn. Yeah. And uh, Michael Riley, let's see, is he uh, going to just Jitte equip here, or is he going to just slam the Stony Silence? That's I think I would question. probably play Stony Silence. You might as well. Yeah. I mean, just, he's, he's still got to be a little bit confused about what's going on. Stony Silence <laughs> has got to make you feel a little bit safer. Right, right. Oh, okay. Post combat GT maybe wants to bait out some sort of uh, counter spell. Doesn't really work when your opponent knows about the Stony Silence, though. No, no, the, the baiting is not very good when your opponent knows. So, like after you've used the tutor, no, that's you sort want of, to bait prior to that. Yeah, that's so, sort of just playing into the days that uh, Mark Paoli definitely has in his deck. Yeah, you saw it game one even. Right. Maybe he just wants to equip the Jitte post combat for some reason. Could be. I, th I think we'll see a Stony Silence here, though. Will it be dazed? Mark Paley hopes so. He certainly does. Interesting that uh, Jitte does not work with Stony Silence in play. Does not do anything. No, so probably not very good to uh, cast the Jitte there. We'll see if Mark can punish him for it. Equipped. Right. Yep. Yeah. He equips, but uh, the, interestingly, he can, will not be able to activate that Jitte's abilities after he casts the Sunny Sounds. I'm just trying to figure out what, why he didn't uh, do that pre combat. Pre combat, right? Yeah, because then you just you get Jitte counters as opposed to not getting them. So Mark Paley will spin his top, try and find something to end this onslaught. Or at least try and even the matchup. Now, uh, let's see to the Synod. You know, it may actually be pretty decent because it helps him dodge the choke. Yeah, that's true. Does not help him dodge the stony silence, though. So Mark adds a Tundra to his real estate. To be clear, uh, this deck that's playing out on the right, it doesn't look much like Maverick from what you're seeing, but the, you know, the deck list is, you know, it's Stoneforge, Knight, right. Mother of Runes, like it's, yeah, it's, like it has a lot of the signifying factors. Right, it's, it's you know. I mean, pretty much, originally Maverick just meant green-white. Yes. And then it sort of got bastardized to include the red for Punishing Fire, 
But really, Maverick can just be green-white with any other color. Yeah. I mean, it's not, he's not a bad dog. He's not casting Jace. He's not casting Fidelli Click. Right. So the GTA again gets Hercules Recall. Oh, another Hercules Recall from Mark Paoli. So he cited in multiple Hercules Recalls here. Pretty surprising to me. Yeah. It's especially when the Stoneforge Mystic can just pop it right back into play for two mana. Maybe even that same turn. So players running out of time pretty quickly here. They have two minutes left. Only two minutes left on the clock, and you know, nothing has really happened this game. No. You have such powerful spells in this legacy format. Neither player able to make anything happen. Absolute stalemate here, game two. Seating for the construction portion of your event has now been posted on the Garrick banner in bright blue paper. The Delver of Secrets for Mark. Once again, two handed giant seal competitors seating for All right, and Academy Ruins. Academy Ruins. Academy Ruins. That can ensure that his Delver will not flip on the left side. He wants it to. Very true. Yeah. And uh, end of turn, Enlightened Tutor from Michael Riley. You know, casting an Enlightened Tutor and then not casting the spell you get with Enlightened Tutor is just pure card disadvantage. Not a practice you want to be doing. Uh, you know, we spoke about this a lot yesterday. Uh, Zach and I are free card opportunists. Right. And, you know, doing that, you haphazardly turn your opponent into a free card opportunist, <laughs> even if he isn't one by choice. Which I don't, I don't think Mark Bailey is one by choice. Perhaps not. I think he just wants to win the game with uh, Painter Servant Grindstone. Yeah. Doesn't really matter how many cards his opponent has on him, you can just grind him out. Very true. So I think Mark Riley looking through his deck right now, trying to figure out what to get with this Enlightened Tutor. Passes by Serenity. Serenity now. Nope, Pithing Needle. Ooh, Pithing Needle, that's interesting. He already has the Stony Silence in hand which he spent a card to go get, and a draw step. A card and a draw step. I, I, think Michael Riley, I think Michael Riley, what he did, he enlightened Tutor for the Stony Silence, then realized that the GT was going to be his path to victory because he had no real pressure. Uh, that's why he didn't end up casting it. Stony Silence, though, does shut off a lot of Mark's deck. All right, so, uh, I mean, last turn, I... I would have much rather he used his mana more efficiently and equipped that Jitte last turn, and then even if he had wanted to in Light Tutor, he could have done it during his upkeep. That seems like it would have been a, a tight play there. Yep. Maybe a better use of the mana. All right, and uh, we're now at turn zero. We, the Ledge Walker picks up the Jitte, and if you're Michael Riley here, you drop Pithing Needle, you drop Stony Silence, just make sure you can't lose. Yeah, he's up again. Right. You play the Stony Silence. Yeah, as, as long as you don't lose the game, you win, you the, win match. the match. Right. Exactly. So GTA gets two counters, and we'll see how Michael Riley ends his turn. Pithing Needle comes into play. Yeah, and uh, I think it's think safe. You just named Grindstone. I think it's safe to say it won't name GTA. But yeah, I think I'd name Grindstone. I don't know how safe anything is at this point, Zach. Yeah, Michael Riley has spent 12 mana activating or and playing GTA this game. And this is the first time it's gotten counters. Yeah, Hercules Recall. I mean, one might be surprised to even see Sulhana Lechwalker in Michael Riley's deck. But Michael Riley hasn't really had an opportunity to draw any threats this game because he's been enlightened tutoring for spells that he does not want to cast. Right. So looks like they're... Michael Riley's trying to figure out what to name on Pithing Needle. Is he, is he naming Pithing Needle? Is that what the point means? I believe he's named... 
Okay, he named Top. Not Grindstone. Okay. See, at this point, Michael Riley, I think I would have named Top because the only way that he can lose the match is by getting grinded out. It's the only yeah. way. I definitely would have named Grindstone. I also would have cast Tony Salas, though. Sure. With no time left on the clock? Seems reasonable. So we are on turn one. Mark Paoli activates his fetch land. He'll get to see a new set of cards from his top, or he won't because uh, that's what was named by the needle. That's actually what'll happen. Michael cuts his opponent's deck and passes the turn. Turn two. Michael Riley untaps his ledge walker and draws his card. It's a green sun zone. That's a good one. The it top is. of Michael's deck, very good to him here. So ledge walker does not pump. Mark will just take one, bring GTA up to three counters. And, uh, you know, if he green suns for three, finds himself another the royal court, he's lethal next turn. Yeah. He chooses instead to green sun for two. He probably wants to get a Kozali Pride match here just to make sure he doesn't die. There are a lot of ways to make sure he doesn't die, though. Yep. That he could have already done, so. So, Kozali Pride Mage coming down. Also, it probably would have been good to get the Kasai Prime Mage before combat so that you get the Exalted Trigger. Yep. yep. Exalted Triggers are uh, nice, just an extra point of damage. Right. Probably won't matter this game. So Mark Paoli plays a Scalding Tarn and says go. This is turn four. And uh, it looks to be that this game will be a draw. This game almost certainly going to be a draw. GTA up to five. Michael choosing not to use any of those GTA counters aggressively. At this point, he's just going to win by a draw. He's going to go ahead and cast the Sunny Silence now without using those GTA counters first. He knows his life total doesn't matter at this point. She needs to make sure he doesn't die. But actually, even if he was grindstone, he wouldn't have a draw phase because turn six isn't doesn't exist. Very but true. Either way, Michael Riley wins the match one to nothing. Yeah. Congratulations, and, uh, he moves to three and zero. Yeah, four and zero. Four and zero. Wow. Yeah. So he's almost top aided. This is a seven round tournament, right? Eight rounds. Just barely eight rounds, I think. Okay. Hey, guys. Hey, welcome <laughs> back. I'm Jacob Van Lunen, joined by Zach Hall, and we're about to bring you guys coverage of round five yeah. of the Star City Games Legacy Open. Uh, we, which, we just watched a really interesting mono blue painter servant deck yeah. face off against a... Uh, a Maverick variant. It's right. not the normal Maverick deck Maverick used with to blue, see. pretty much. Yeah. No so, punishing fires with blue. So but. we're going to take a really quick break. We'll be right back with more coverage here at the, at the Legacy Open. See and, you soon. Uh, see you soon. Congratulations. You know, we did a nice uh, after round one interview, and then yeah. we get the nice yeah. after finals interview. Almost like we knew it was coming. David Sharkman, ladies and gentlemen. Champion. Champion. So, uh... Your semifinals match was not a good matchup for you. No, not at all. That's yeah. the, the, according to everyone else, that's the worst matchup. I'm pretty sure it's humans. 